My name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I got my third design internship with Venga. Morning everyone, welcome back to the third episode of my internship journey. Today we're going to talk about my third internship, a motion design internship in spring 2017 with Zynga. Zynga was the game company that was behind Zynga Poker, Words with Friends, Farm Rail, and a bunch of other games that were quite a big hit back in the days when I was in high school around 2010-ish. If you have not played or heard of any of those games, you probably should make some friends because you need friends to play Words with Friends. Jokes aside, just like before, in this video I'm going to cover three takeaways from this offer. Number one, connections. Number two, self-understanding. Number three, portfolio layout. Let's start right in. I'm not talking about nepotism, I'm not talking about networking. Those are videos for another time. The connection I'm highlighting here is about how you keep in touch with people you know and maintain a relationship for future opportunities, especially reoccurring opportunities. In summer 2015, soon after I signed an offer with MuleSoft, I got an email from Zynga asking me whether I was interested in talking to them regarding a UX design internship. My first reaction was like, oh boy, what did I miss? I thought about it for a while, then I was like, hmm, it was actually okay to miss that opportunity. To get a bigger picture, there are actually a few facts to understand here. Number one, by starting an offer with MuleSoft, that means I will get real world experience. It will be on my resume, which means I can only have more opportunities in the future. Number two, Zynga can interview me with the portfolio that I had back then. Meaning the one that I had was not too bad. And I know for a fact that my portfolio can only get better because I will keep working on it. So it's likely that Zynga will be interested in interviewing with me again in the future. Number three, I did some research and found that Zynga actually have internships every quarter in the past. So it's likely that they will have internship openings again in the foreseeable future. Knowing all those, I responded to the recruiter saying that I already signed an offer, but I will be interested in talking to Zynga for future opportunities. And that's exactly what happened. In December 2016, I graduated from Georgia Tech. So I went on LinkedIn and messaged a recruiter asking whether they were looking for interns in the spring. Since we had been in contact in the past, with some luck, she responded the next day. Next day response, unbelievable. Even faster than Amazon Prime. Just to clarify here, I'm not saying LinkedIn is the best way to connect. It does not guarantee success. I have to say it didn't work 98% of the time for me. I'm not against it. I know it works quite well for some people. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, don't quote me saying, Justin said use LinkedIn to connect, but it didn't work for me. Dislike, unsub, he gives bad advice. Baseline, try anything that works for you. So the whole application process didn't begin with filling out an online form, but from just an intro email which in the end still led to an offer. Number two, self-understanding. This by all means is to understand yourself better. It's not the same as self-aware, but to be able to find out what you like and what you want. The overall theme here is actually nothing more than common sense. There's so many things out there. So many. There must be something that you like and something that you don't. For example, some people might like iOS, like me, and some people like Android. For those who like iOS, there are also so many reasons. Some like their fluid interface and some like their seamless ecosystem. The point here is to think about things around you for a second. Think about design for a second. What do you like and what do you want? For instance, between graphic design and motion design, I definitely like motion design better because I feel like life is full of motion. Motion makes things come to life. Motion is more playful, it's more fun. Motion gives people moments of surprise and delight. And I can go on and on and on all day why I like motion design. I'm not saying I hate graphic design, I like it. It's just between the two, I prefer motion. And in fact, to succeed in motion design, you need to have strong graphic design skills. So don't get me wrong, it's not about picking a side here, but to find out what you prefer and why you prefer it. Answers to these two questions will be important for you to move forward to become a better designer in the long run. And of course, for the purpose of this video, to help you get yourself an internship. Make sense? Oh 
oh yeah, I want an internship, so I'm interested in anything. No, that's not what I said. I said I'm definitely interested and I would prefer to work on video ads because I like how motion brings things to life. I like to use motion to capture users' attention in a fun but non-intrusive way. And I like that challenge. I have no problem working on static ads at all, but I find motion and video ads more interesting to work on and static ads gets boring for me sometimes. The answer sounds familiar, right? It was basically the same thing I said earlier about why I prefer motion over graphic design, but put in the context of marketing materials. I did not prepare my speech beforehand, but I know what I like about motion design and why I like it more, so I was able to give all my reasonings in that interview. Think about from a hiring manager's perspective, there are two candidates. Candidate A, he knows exactly what he wants to work on, he's interested in the topic, he's passionate about a particular area of design. And candidate B, he doesn't know what he wants to work on, he does not demonstrate his interest in or passion on an area of design. Who would you pick? From just this information, who can possibly contribute more and better work? Which candidate require less time, effort and guidance from the manager? Of course, it's A, right? He's passionate about motion design, so it's more likely he will produce good and interesting work. He knows exactly what he's looking for, so he's a motivated self-starter who can work independently, which will ultimately save the manager some time from all the coaching and guiding. Don't get me wrong, there will always be interaction between the manager and the intern. But as you can imagine, the manager himself has work to do, so you cannot expect the manager to spend hours every day holding the intern's hand and guide him through the work. Make sense? Make sense? Make sense? Number three, portfolio layout. If you were to open a portfolio link, the landing page is probably not going to be a specific project page, but rather a page with all the project thumbnails and captions. This page where all your projects go is basically a catalog of your projects. The layout design, the composition, the information hierarchy of this page is actually somewhat important as I learned from this internship. At the end of the internship, I asked my manager what caught his eye about my work. And he said it was this structured, rigid, German-style grid layout, setting a tone and bringing order to the page. Huh, good to know. To look back, I realized there were two things that I did for the layout. When I first started on my portfolio for my first internship, I already established a square grid layout. And then when I was interning at Pinterest in summer 2016, I spent more time tweaking the project page to make things more cohesive and consistent, especially the project images, the backgrounds, and the captions. To summarize in one sentence, first, I set up the rules for the grid layout in 2015. Then I tweaked the project thumbnails for their consistency in 2016. Both help reinforce a more clear, prominent, and stronger layout. Why is the layout important? Simple reasons. The project catalog is probably the first thing your hiring manager will see, meaning that's where your manager will form the first impression of you. Of course, you want the manager to say, ooh, this is really organized, this looks good, this is pleasing to look at, it's very simple, very clean, rather than, ooh, this is all over the place. If you use project builders like Squarespace or WordPress, they already have some good templates for layout, but some are rather more creative than others. There's a lot going into how much creativity you want to have in your project page layout. If you want me to cover that in another video, comment down below. Where there's a request, there's the video. That's my new YouTube mantra. Generally speaking, if you just started out and don't know what to pick, just pick a classic one from the library, like a 3x3 three three grid layout to begin with, and have sharp and crisp project images. That will help serve you a long way. You can always play with the layout later, but one common mistake for students is that they will spend hours trying to find creative layouts with some stacking, artsy, cool elements, and hope they will add points to their internship applications or offset some of the low quality work in their projects. That doesn't work. To have a higher chance of success, you are better off spending that time on crafting your individual projects and just go with a simple 3x3 three three grid layout. Alright guys, that concludes my third design internship in Silicon Valley with Zynga and the three key ingredients to this offer are connections, self-understanding, and portfolio layout. With that said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you find this video useful. If so, transcend the like button for that awesome blue to show up and subscribe to this channel for more exciting videos. This will help motivate me so much producing high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!